I took the award as an endorsement of our own struggle in South Africa and the manner in which we have tried to carry out that struggle. Hello and welcome to Signature Africa. This is the channel that informs about Africa's assets, investments, people and places. My name is Bongi Kuala. Thank you very much for joining us. We come to you from the great place of uh, Nkosi Albert Lutuli. This is uh, the leader of uh, the African National Congress, the ruling party here, way back uh, many years ago, but also the first black uh, recipient of uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. We talked to the doctor, uh, Dr. Albertina Lutuli, who joins us uh, uh, today. Dr. Lutuli, good to have you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Right. We are in the house that you grew up in many years ago. Just coming back here, I know you li we live not far from here, but every time you come back here, what goes through your mind? I go through the memories of me being a child in this house. Uh, one of seven children, and uh, my mom and dad all together in what I would call at any time a very happy family. Mm. But I must add, this family was always containing more people than the immediate families. I've said seven children and our parents. A lot of the relatives brought their children here because they were in the town. Mm. Johannesburg, Durban, mainly working there, and they brought their children to be brought up by my mother, who was famous for being, for knowing exactly how to bring children. <laughs> Disciplined and hard work. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So we will be talking about, uh, I see seven pillars here that uh, begin to describe. Uh, uh, Ingosu Albert Lutuli, the religious leader, uh, you know, the agriculturalist, the educator, uh, the political leader, and so on and so on. But how do you best remember uh, Ubaba Ngosi Albert Lutuli? I really remember him first as a very, very uh, uh, good father. Mm. Yeah, a very good family man. And um, so that was, uh, the, the, uh, those are fond, fond memories of him in my heart. But as I grew up from, of course, you know, from being a child, appreciating a good father and a good mother, I began to see my father as a, a man who was really interested in the welfare, how other people were living their lives, you know. Um, he, community, at community level, he was um, a very, very influential man. Of course, he was chief. Mm. Yeah, he was the chief. He became chief in the almost in the year that I was born, mm. from Adams College, he, where he had been. They asked him to come and be chief here, and he spent his days and time looking for ways uh, of improving. Of, improving the lives of the people in this community of uh, Crowdville. Now, Crowdville was, is huge. Mm -hmm. It's not just here, you know. There's what you call uh, branches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are seven or nine of them. So it's a huge area. And he traversed those, those, those places, just preaching how people can improve their own lives where they are, and it happened. So he is a chief, so he, he doesn't spend time only dealing with uh, the issues of the household, but the entire community is dependent on him to give guidance and leadership. But also he is a political leader. The ANC is in exile at that time. Uh, he also needs to give guidance to the internal structures of the ANC, communicating with the external structures that were outward in. How do you then remember those, those, uh, those times? Well, you know, he entered politics in um, uh, about uh, uh, 1940, 1948 or thereabouts, you know, when the Nationalist Party came to power around that mm. time. And uh, I mean, actively, yes. actively. And he was elected the president of uh, Natal as it was known then, the province of Natal. There were four provinces forming the Union yes. of South Africa at that time. And he, he, he became 
a leader in Natal. And you could see that uh, his, his aim was to build the organization, to build the ANC and make it bigger and bigger in terms of uh, uh, those who believe in the, in, the, in, the, in the gospel of the ANC. Yeah. He traveled up and down, you know, uh, talking to people. Now, this was in his nature, because at Adams College, he was the teacher. He taught um, at the training college of teachers. He was training college head, where the teachers, you know, were, were, were produced. So organization was one of the subjects that he taught. Mm. So he believed in being organized seriously. And that led them, in, let, that made him uh, a standout, you know, as a leader. So it came to the point now where they wanted, after about two years as leader of uh, Natal, they, they quickly wanted him to become the, general, the President General of the African National Congress. Mm. And that happened in 1950, you know, 4950. And that's when really now he became immersed almost 24-7 in the affairs of the country. Mm. Yeah. But particularly as a leader of the African National Congress. Yeah. Where does that leave you as the family now, now that he's immersed in the, the, the issues, uh, burning issues, I might add, of the country at that particular time? The Nationalist Party is in power right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Group Areas Act is rife at that time. Uh, and, of course, uh, the, the leaders of, the, of those times were targeted by yeah. the Nationalist Party government. Yes. yes, the Nationalist Party, you know, was really um, at its worst, mm. you know. They were now involved in just making sure that they, 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 they bear us, you know, the, the majority who were black people. They take everything that could make you feel that you are an individual in South Africa. You got rights and you can you have rights to own property and, uh, uh, you know, and live a free life. So they were doing cattle culling, they were reducing the land, you know, and they were doing all those things, you see, which really were to make us not develop, especially economically, but to be dependent for our daily life livelihoods on a government which really didn't care for us, mm. which had defined itself clearly that our place was, uh, was not to be educated, for instance, we were just made by God mm. for to serve them and to be hewers of uh, wood and carry water, mm. you know, that mm. kind of thing. So he, you know, he had to deal with uh, as chief as well as uh, the leader of the African National Congress. And it, he, he spent all his uh, energies, you know, uh, uh, making sure that black, uh, the black people must not lose uh, their dignity. They mustn't lose hope. They must just go on and challenge the government and fight on because there was a vision. There was a vision. You know, mm. the leadership of the times was driven by this vision of a free, non racial, non sexist, um, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 a South Africa which should provide every citizen with a place. It was also An equal and prosperous South Africa. So that's the vision they had, and they were, and he worked hard, even as president of the ANC, in that direction. Mm. And, and uh, you know what characterized his tenure as the president general of the of the ANC? I would say that it was his uh, um, uh, really one organizational power, as I've already said. The ANC, he, he addressed many rallies of the ANC and grew it up. And those were the times when now the leader could talk to the people, mm. you know, and, uh, and, 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 and therefore people were kept knowing about themselves, 
and all that was happening around them. Uh, there was a famous place in Durban called Red Square, mm. where those rallies used to take place, and the office was just across Gray Street, Lakani Chambers, where the, the leadership, uh, you know, would meet. But now, of course, <coughs> the, the, the government of the day now was beginning really to react um, almost brutally, mm. you know, to people who were doing that kind of work. Uh, the burnings came, you know, they, that's when they began to feel that we must uh, cut their tongues. Mm. We must make them unable to speak. We must make them unable to uh, meet with their crowds, you know. So they were dishing out burning orders to mm. the leadership, especially my father, because he was the leader, you know. Mm. And it would be one year, two years, and then five years.